You don't remember where you were. Okay, well, I'm going to give you George Bush's phone number because he'll want to talk to you because you're the first person I have found anywhere, literally, in all of my talks. Uh, nobody ever said they could not remember where they were on November 22, 1963, uh, because this is just, you know, uh, even people who were four or five years old can remember they were, you know, in Mrs. Johnson's class and when the announcement was made. Uh, in any case, he did not remember where he was, he said. And I thought that was interesting because he wasn't five years old, he was an adult, uh, and he was in politics. He was running for the United States Senate uh, in Texas, and Kennedy was shot in Dallas, and I thought, wow, that's really something, because he would have had to stop his campaigning and maybe say something, you know. So I thought that was interesting, and I sort of began trying to figure out whether there was some more to this, this odd explanation. And the result of that is four chapters in Family of Secrets about the Kennedy assassination, something I never intended to look at. I, I frankly had never paid any attention to it. It just always seemed to be sort of not a sort of profitable avenue to go down for a, for a journalist. Uh, there are what must be a thousand books plus on it with every imaginable theory and, and twist on that. And uh, you know, and friends said to me, Please do not. They beseeched me. Don't get into that. You've got a great book here. Just <laughs> drop it. It's just, you're not going to get anywhere with that. People are going to just, you know, uh, discount you as a nut and so on. And I said, well, you know, I'm just going to go a little bit. We'll just try to find out why he can't remember. That's all. Well, okay. So let me just read you a little bit on that subject. This is a chapter for uh, Where Was Poppy? George H.W. Bush may be one of the few Americans of his generation who cannot recall exactly where he was when John F. Kennedy was shot in Dallas on November 22, 1963. At times, he has said that he was, quote, somewhere in Texas. Bush was indeed somewhere in Texas, and he had every reason to remember. At the time, Bush was the 39-year-old chairman of the Harris County, Houston, Republican Party and an outspoken critic of the president. He was also actively campaigning for a seat in the U.S. Senate at exactly the time Kennedy was assassinated right in Bush's own state. The story behind Bush's apparent evasiveness is complicated, yet it is crucial to an understanding not just of the Bush family, but also of a tragic chapter in the nation's history. Uh, and um, what I do is I relate some uh, declassified documents of particular interest. These documents were uh, discovered by journalists. And uh, they were discovered at key points when uh, the elder Bush, I'm going to refer to him as I do in the book as Poppy. This was his nickname, it's not derogatory, this was the nickname in the family. And I use that, and the, the, the friends call the son W, and so I say Poppy and W, so I don't have to say George H. W. and, and George W., uh, although I do it sometimes. Um, and so um, uh, two journalists, one found each of these two memos I'm going to refer to. And uh, when they wrote about them, these stories were buried. And they were buried uh, right at the time, uh, in 1988, when uh, Poppy Bush, who was Vice President of the United States, was, uh, uh, was, was wrapping up the, the Republican nomination to become President of the United States. And here are memos relating to uh, what he was doing uh, in 1963, around the time of the assassination. And again, the stories were buried. On Thursday, August 20, oh, I'm sorry, let me, uh, let me back up here. When Joseph McBride came upon the document about George H.W. Bush's double life, he was not looking for it. Uh, it was 1985, and McBride, a writer for Daily Variety, uh, he was in a public library actually doing research on a book on the director, Frank Capra. Uh, and he was interested in Capra because it turned out that Capra, uh, movies that were all uh, uh, loved by liberals, uh, that Capra himself was uh, quite a conservative and a right, right winger uh, who had not written uh, his own material. And so he was interested in Capra and the FBI and so forth. And he also was interested in Kennedy assassination because uh, he had worked as a volunteer on Kennedy's campaign. And uh, uh, around this period, uh, some, uh, some microfilms of documents had been released, and they were at the a library, and so we took a break. Uh, we all, all of us journalists, are always looking for an excuse not to do our work. Uh, if you've ever been in college, you remember that experience. And so he began just looking at these microfilms of hundreds of thousands of documents. Uh, a particular memo caught his eye, and he leaned in for a closer look. Practically jumping off the screen was a memorandum from FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, dated November 29, 1963. Under the subject heading, 
assassination of President John F. Kennedy, Hoover reported that on the day after JFK's murder, the Bureau had provided two individuals with briefings. One was Captain William Edwards of the Defense Intelligence Agency. The other, Mr. George Bush of the Central Intelligence Agency. Now, this is 1963. Uh, George uh, uh, Poppy Bush's only connection with the CIA that is well known by the public is that in 1976, uh, President Gerald Ford appointed him to be the director of the CIA. And I went back to read the articles at the time in the New York Times and elsewhere. And they were all sort of scratching their heads saying, huh, that's sort of an odd choice. Uh, well, even odder than Leon Panetta being made uh, the, the head of the CIA. Uh, uh, Panetta, a very distinguished member of Congress for many years, a very smart fellow, uh, 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 at least knew his, knew his way around on these issues. And, and George uh, Bush had uh, been a congressman for you know, a couple of years and then seen this extraordinarily rapid rise, but he really had no uh, basis, no knowledge about these things. And in the mid-1970s, there were all these hearings, you may remember if you're old enough, called the Church Hearings, Frank Church's committee, and they were looking into the, the, uh, the notion that the CIA was wildly out of control, that it uh, was involved in unauthorized assassinations of leaders abroad, uh, a number of them democratically elected, uh, and asking questions about whether the CIA was involved in illegal domestic activities. And, 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 uh, uh, and so they brought in, of all people, George H.W. Bush, this sort of mild-mannered, milk-toasty guy, to be the head of the agency at this moment. And the, the, you know, it was just everybody was saying, oh, that's sort of odd. Well, anyway, let's, let's move on. Well, it, it was a mistake to move on because the answer was they put him in not because he had no experience with the CIA, but because he had lots of experience with the CIA. Uh, in fact, uh, what this memo and others in Family Secrets suggest are that George H.W. Bush uh, was always CIA, that in fact his entire adult life, what he had been essentially was some sort of intelligence asset or officer. Uh, really an interesting parallel to another world leader who's commonly reviled in this country for the exact same re reason, Vladimir Putin uh, of Russia. Uh, and, and, and in the media here they commonly mention sort of disparagingly that he was a lifelong spook and yet nobody in this country that seems to know that uh, uh, Bush 41 was apparently a lifelong spook. Um, this, this particular memo is very interesting, and I, I go into it a little bit, and I, I hope that perhaps in some future work I can go into this further, because uh, it's, it's the FBI talking about uh, Cuban exiles and uh, uh, concern that Cuban exiles might take Kennedy's assassination as an invitation to launch an unauthorized invasion uh, of Cuba. And, you know, here's this George Bush is in on this conversation, uh, uh, f uh, furthering this notion that he may have been working with, uh, with uh, deep uh, uh, Cuban exiles uh, in operations. Uh, there's a second memo that another journalist finds, and that memo uh, uh, relates, is I think, even more intriguing. This is, instead of being about the day after the assassination, this is about the day of the assassination. Uh, 